I invite you all this morning to kneel with me in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I want to thank you this morning for blessing us with such a beautiful day. But more than that, I want to thank you for all that you've done for us. I want to thank you that you created us, that then you came and died for us because we turned away from you. I pray for your presence to be with us while we're here at church, but stay with us during the next week so we may know that you are God, so we may be convicted of the things that we do wrong and turn from our sin. I want to pray this morning for all those who are unable to make it here today. I pray that you give them a special Sabbath day's blessing. I pray for all those who are unwell, physically, mentally, spiritual, spiritually. I pray that you come into our lives and be our God. Um, we're grateful for all that you have done for us and we believe that you are who you say you are. Please be with Pastor Gary as he preaches this morning. Um, guide his words, be with us in the congregation and help us to hear what you have for us this morning. Amen. Well, it's a real joy to be in the house of the Lord this morning, amen? And a lot of people or a lot of members would think, why does he always come out with that comment? Because, and I just want to tell you, it is a joy to be in the house of the Lord this morning. You know, some of you may not realize, but during the week, we are in contact with members who are struggling, who have problems and issues. And during the week, we can see that they've overcome these issues because they're here on Sabbath morning, praising the Lord with us. And that brings me joy. And uh, Pastor Adrian experiences the same thing. Uh, it's also a joy to see um, Mr. and Mrs. Brian here. Um, sorry, Brian, I've forgotten your surname. But good to see you here as a married couple. And of course, our dear friend Erica is visiting with us today too. Wonderful to see you all this morning and to see that you're that we're working through our issues and that we can come and praise the Lord on a Sabbath morning. But how many of you know what Nova Cementa means? Some of you do, but a lot of you don't know what Nova Cementa means. And I wonder why. And this plug I'm doing for our Sabbath school. You know, our Sabbath school is the start of our Sabbath service. And so many people are missing out on a wonderful blessing by being here at Sabbath school to hear and study God's word and also to realize there's a lot of preparation that goes in to preparing a Sabbath school prelim and of course the teachers to, to uh, organize a Sabbath school. So I'd like to encourage you that when you get up on the Sabbath morning, don't roll over, get out of bed and come to church for Sabbath school. Would you do that for me? Amen. Good to hear. Praise the Lord. Spring. What a great time of year spring is. Do you all like spring? It's one of my favorite times of year. And also autumn is a favorite time of year. What happens in between with winter, I can leave. And, uh, and summer is also enjoyable. But spring is a special time of year because it brings color and new birth, right? And it's great to see all these lovely little newborn animals um, galloping around the properties, you know, you have your little ducklings waddling around and there it's not long before the pukekos are chasing them to uh, feed them again to their babies. And then you have uh, the, the calves, of course, too. And then you have the, the little lambs. And the lambs, of course, are always interesting as they run around and jump, and especially in the evening. And, of course, we've got two calves at the moment, and those are Marianne's little babies, and they're a joy to watch, too, as they, as they jump around. But sheep, or lambs, I should say, always amaze me because they're only just born, and soon they're at a size that they resemble their mother, and I think, wow, that goes so quick. And yet, with us, it's a little bit different, isn't it? And, of course, we have uh, farmers and ex-sheep uh, farmers that can appreciate what it is like to look after sheep and, that is, and, uh, and what, what is needed to look after sheep. And I think maybe it's when uh, that is all you have to do and you have time for, uh, you build a totally different form 
of trust with the animals. Even when we were recently in the Black Forest area of Germany, we came across a shepherd grazing his flock on the hillside. And on talking to him, apparently he had over 600 sheep that he was tethering uh, along uh, the hillside in the Black Forest there. And it was really interesting to see because he obviously was spending all the day with him. He had his staff in one hand, and uh, in the night, I think he kind of resided at the local hotel. Uh, what happened to the sheep, I'm not too sure. But this brings me back to the story of a wonderful little shepherd boy by the name of David. And of course, unlike sheep farming today, for David, it was a totally different um, kettle of fish, I could say, but a totally different lifestyle. Because unlike our farmers today, David was always keeping his ears and his eyes out for the prey that could easily take one of his newborn lambs, whether it be a lion, a bear, or a wolf. So being a shepherd in those days was not an easy task. On those cold evenings, I could imagine that David would be able to snuggle amongst his sheep because of the trust that he had developed with them, and they knew his voice. Let us just take in the situation now of what is about to unfold. David, David is maybe out there leaning on a rock, enjoying the, the sun as it's so frequent in the Middle East, soaking up its warmth. Or perhaps he was just throwing some pebbles into the dust as he's keeping an eye on his sheep. Maybe was he perhaps conjuring up a psalm or a song in his head. And as he's doing this, suddenly he noticed that his sheep are startled by a movement and he looks in the direction of distraction. A man with a staff in his hand and walking quite rapidly is making his way towards the young shepherd boy, David. Completely out of breath, he says, David, David, he gasps, you have been summoned by your father to return home immediately. But why, says David, maybe. The prophet of the Lord wants to see you. Yeah, but, but uh, it's okay, it's okay. I'll stay and look after the flock. Just simply go. David perhaps thinks to himself, what, me? What does this great prophet Samuel want from me? So David goes. David, the youngest son of Jesse, was born in Bethlehem a thousand years before the begotten Son of God, the real King of Heaven, Jesus our Lord. A coincidence? No, I think, don't think so. It is so fascinating to reflect on the life of David and see the similarities of that of Jesus. And it starts right here in that little town of Bethlehem. Bethlehem, a small village of no significance, becomes popular and renowned as the birthplace of the Son of God, the Messiah. And so important was it that it's recorded in Scripture in Micah 5, verse 2. Even the birthplace place of the Messiah was recorded. Simply says, Thou Bethlehem Ephratah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judah, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel whose going forth had been from old, from everlasting. A shepherd that was there from everlasting and from old. Unbeknown to David though, the young shepherd boy, God was preparing him, David, in his solitary life with his flocks for the work he designed to commit to uh, his trust in many years to come. Samuel, however, the prophet, was mourning the fact that King Saul was no longer the chosen leader of Israel. When the Lord said to him, fill thine horn with oil and go, for I will send you to Jesse, the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. We follow the story, or we pick up the story, sorry, in the first book of Samuel, and we'll be reading from... Uh, 
uh, in chapter 16 from 1 to 13. And I'd just like to read this down with you because it's, it's very, very interesting the way this all comes together, the way it starts. And it simply says, And the Lord said unto Samuel, How long will thou mourn for Saul, seeing I have rejected him from reigning over Israel? Fill thy horn with oil and go, and I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. And Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hear it, he will kill me. An amazing statement from the prophet of God. Where's his trust? And yet he fears the king that is no longer the chosen of God. And the Lord said, Simply take a heifer with thee and say, I am come to sacrifice to the Lord. And call Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show thee what thou shalt do, and thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. Pretty, pretty simple um, explanation and, and a job description, isn't it? Samuel did that which the Lord spoke and came to Bethlehem. And the elders of the town trembled at his coming and said, Comest thou peace, peaceably? An amazing statement from the elders of the, of the town, isn't it? They feared the prophet of God in case he came with a judgment upon them. And he said, No, I come peaceably. peaceably. I am come to sacrifice unto the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to the sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and called them to the sacrifice. And it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, Surely the Lord anointed is before me, before him. But the Lord simply said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart, the heart of man. Then Jesse called Abba, Abinabadab, I think you pronounce that, and made him pass before Samuel. And he said, Neither hath the, God, the Lord chosen this. Then Jesse made Shammah to pass by, and he said, Neither hath the Lord chosen this. Again, Jesse made seven of his sons to pass before Samuel, and Samuel said unto Jesse, um, The Lord hath not chosen these. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Are here all thy children? And he said, There remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, Send and fetch him, for he will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in, now he was ruddy and with all of a beautiful countenance and goodly to look upon. So here we have this young, attractive uh, shepherd boy come into the presence of Samuel. And the Lord said, Arise, anoint him, for this is he. So this day is young David uh, anointed. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. Samuel goes back home because his work has been done. He's anointed the second king of Israel. And here we are not to forget, to forget actually the chronology of this line of David through to Jesus. It's important to follow. And it's interesting that the Bible takes time. The Bible writers take time to mention this. In Ruth chapter 4 verse 17 it's stated... And the woman, her neighbors, gave it, the baby, a name, saying, This is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Obed, her son. He is the father of Jesse, her grandson. He is the father of David, great-grandson. So isn't that amazing to follow this chronology? And it actually makes it more tangible and under, uh, for us easier to understand. And uh, I found that really interesting. From the book of Acts of the Apostles, uh, referring to a, a, a passage that Paul said, um, states here that being invited to speak, Paul stood up and beckoning with his hand said, Men of Israel, and ye that fear God, give audience. Then followed a wonderful discourse. He proceeded to give a history of the manner in which the Lord had dealt with the Jews from the time of their deliverance from Egypt 
Egyptian bondage and how a saviour had been promised of the seed of David. And he boldly declared that of this man's seed, seed hath God, according to his promise, raised unto Israel a saviour, Jesus Christ. Back then and today, it's good news. Amen. All through the books of Samuel is the life of David recorded and right on into the book of Chronicles and, of course, the book of Kings. The rest of chapter 16 recalls how God's anointed King Saul asked Jesse, uh, David's father, if David could come 